Yeah, time um, yeah. It being five o'clock, I call the selectmen's meeting to order. Um, I make a motion to go in. Uh, where? It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's two A's. So I make a motion to go into non-public sessions under R. Uh, excuse me. I. I resent my motion. I make a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91-A colon 3-2-A session 1 and RSA 91-A colon 3-2 session at uh, 2-A session 2. That's okay. Seconded. No discussion. Hearing none. Roll call vote. Chair, yes. It's in yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. Four, yes. Zero, no. We are in non-public session at 5 <laughs> yeah. I make a motion that we come out of non-public. Second that. That. Do we have to approve? Yeah, but you've got to tell what time to. Oh, at 6.01. Roll call vote. Prentice uh, yes. Very, very nope. yes. <laughs> Prentice yes. And those minutes are not sealed. I call the meeting to order. So one. And uh, ask for any changes or additions made to the agenda tonight. We do have one inch hint to cut. Map 213, lot 31. Added. 213, lot 31. Yep. And I'd like to add the discussion of a process for appointing the, the new select board person to the vacancy. Hi there, this is Maureen. Um, just for the record, since it's usually Jim and Maureen, it's only Maureen this week. I just wanted you to know that. Okay, thank you, um, Maureen. And I am interested also in the discussion about the vacant select board position because it's so far it still seems like rumor, and um, that's not a good thing. So it'd be nice to uh, have some more information out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maureen. Any other public comments? Okay. Yeah, my name is Tony Eldridge, and I have uh, some monitors here for the board. They can either read it if they want to, or I can. Um, I heard last meeting there was a little bit of discussion about me and who I was and my credentials. I got not appointed, but uh, talked about, I guess, for the selectman position. I just a little about about myself. I was born here, grew up here, went through the school system, uh, went through Kennet. Went four years for law enforcement at Unity College, graduated from there, worked for New Hampshire DOT for 10 years. Most of it was as administration or uh, supervisor in Chikorwa, so I was right here in town. And after that, in 2019, I went to work as a public works director in OSPE. And the Board of Selectmen in OSPE wrote this letter as a reference for you guys. And I guess I'll just read it. It says, uh, Dear, Dear Tam Tamworth Board of Selectmen, this is a letter of reference for T.J. Eldridge, who has been the town of Osby's public works director since 2000, December 2019. This, pos this position encompasses many different functions without, within town operations. T.J. is responsible for the highway department, transfer station, government buildings, parks and recreation, water and sewer, plus vehicle and equipment maintenance. A subset of all these responsibilities is the purchase and acquisition of vehicles and equipment among the various departments, plus management of 20-plus employees. TJ has the tenacity, fortitude, and a work ethic that is unrivaled. He puts his heart and soul into every situation. Town operations have become extremely efficient, transparent, and accountable to the taxpayer of Osby. If the Tamworth Board of Selectmen were to appoint TJ as a selectman, we are certain the taxpayers of Tamworth would benefit immensely from his knowledge. Sincerely, John Smith, Board of Selectmen, Martha Eldridge, and Susan Simpson. So I thought that was pretty good of them to do that for me. Um, the reason I wanted to do it is I've sat on the other side of the table for three years now, and 
I'd like to see what I could do to help the town. A big feat that the team in Osby my, and myself worked at is the town in Osby did not use a tan note this year, and that's the first time ever. So that's a big deal for us. We ended with a surplus. Um, we were end up, ended up to either flatline or almost flatline our budgets. With all this inflation, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I, as you can see, I have almost every department in the town, so it's a big deal. Working with budget committees, working through the budget process for every one of these, working in public works, working with the rec department, working with Justin, our new rec department uh, rec director, working with the transfer, station, the transfer station. I do all that with them. And the water and sewer, I'm actually the supervisor of that too, so I walk, work through all that. So I think I could bring some to the table and hope I get a chance to. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Any other public input? Hearing none, I'll go on to new business. We have uh, the Recreation Department update. Dan? Yeah. Uh, so coming in the spring now, uh, so we'll have separate programs going on, uh, t-ball, uh, second, third grade softball, fourth, fifth, sixth grade softball, uh, spring soccer for third through sixth grade, um, as well as starting in May, um, a track and field uh, group that will meet once a week and hopefully be in some local uh, races and stuff and meets with other community communities around the area. Uh, we have Paint night again uh, on April 27th, which is a Wednesday, not a Thursday. That was an issue last time. Uh, 20 seat max, like last time, it will be down at 6 o'clock at the uh, townhouse. Th uh, $30 per painter. Uh, April 16th, uh, that's Saturday, we have our Easter egg hunt at noon at Fremont Park. Uh, it's for kids, kids ages 3 to 9. That's a free event. Uh, we got here. Uh, tennis courts are now open. Um, both nets are up. And it looks like at some point in July, they're going to come to fill the cracks and put uh, pickleball uh, lines on the second court. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of pickleball, is still going on twice a week, week right now at the uh, school. And what else we got? We got, oh, the, uh, our snow stomper event. That's what's happened in March. That got canceled because of lack of snow and bad weather. Uh, as we had said then, it was postponed. It's now the summer stop up. And that's going to be uh, June 4th, which is a Saturday, uh, at the rec fields. And more information on that will be coming out in the next week. Uh, family day, still on for all that. Uh, we'll have vendors here, vendors down at the school. We'll have the parade. And we'll have games and activities at both locations for everybody to, to partake in. Um, we always look for more volunteers to help out with that. So if anybody's interested, let us know. Um, other than that, yeah. Great. That's kind of the spring update. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Linda? Um, there's no mention of summer program. Is that still going? Or? Yep. Uh, so for the summer program, uh, that is still... We sit right behind you. <laughs> That's why you can talk. Um, uh, yeah, that is still planned to, to um, go on. Uh, we got the okay from the school to use the facilities there. And I met with the uh, White Lake State Park today, actually, to go over the swim program stuff. So more information on that will be coming out in the next week or two, including sign-ups, dates, and... Uh, all that fun stuff. So, but yes, so that is still. So, program should be go. Should be, should be go. Yep. As you just need to find help now. As long as I get a lifeguard, <laughs> which <laughs> I, I will start. That, that process will start now. So that's great because like it's an important thing. Yep. It's the one. But yeah. So, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dan. All right. I'm all pickable. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. And uh, Kim Tremble about the vault storage system. Yeah, do you want to see if Kim can come in? <coughs> Thank you. I put that on you. I gave you 
So this was a filing system that we had looked at um, four years ago, I think. Um, And the uh, reason it has come around is that the CIP had money set aside and it was available this year. So we've uh, recontacted the individual uh, gentleman, same gentleman has come out, gone back over everything with us in regards to... um, the installation and, and met with Tim, our maintenance man as well. Um, just the whole uh, shelving <laughs> units themselves, um, they will install, they're gonna, they'll have enough guys to remove everything, install the shelving, put everything back. I'm going to guess it's, I think it's a couple of days that they two talked to three, about. Two to three. Um, this is in your office? No, I wish. <laughs> no, I only wish that because I wish the vault, I had a vault that big. It's for the vault in the selectman's office. I'm sorry. It's for the vault in the selectman's office. Um, it, the rolling shelving, and it would increase um, <coughs> tremendously, I think, almost doubling, I think, um, the capacity. Yeah. And we have a lot of uh, items downstairs that really should be up in the vault up here. Um, and so that would allow us to bring some of those items up as well, permanent record type of items. Um, Also, I uh, touched upon a little bit um, in the retention schedule with the state. Now you can use the uh, PDF archival uh, method, Um, and there are a lot of warrant, I call it water (coughs) books, but a lot of old warrant books down there that... um, I believe we still have to keep in paper, um, but we could make more accessible through the PDF archival um, scanning and storing that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think with the books we have, and I've just received four books back recently that the Tamworth Foundation, with the 250th committee money, um, the Co-File Preservation just finished four, and I had they just took about 10, well, maybe 15 more. Um, a beautiful job. We have rolling shelves for those, so that's why it looks like there's a little space here on the picture, but that's where the rolling shelves are at. I mean, the, um, the roller shelves for the historical records is already in the vault. Okay. That will stay. And then these rolling shelves back and forth will allow us to put uh, rid of the, the cabinet files and, and increase that storage area. So um, I think we had 40000 in the CIP for this. And the project price at this, the, what they have is the 37785 So a little, little to work with if something should come up. But um, I just needed, it, there's a three-month window, was like almost four. four months almost. So they wanted us to, to get some type of approval to move forward so that they could get that going, um, it'd probably be, I think, 12, 16 weeks before they're actually here, which will work with them to schedule a time that um, they don't do weekends, I think. So it it may be like a Monday, Tuesday, we might have to close the building or for that Tuesday following, or I don't know if we can coincide it with election because we're closed anyway, and I'm usually at the elections. Um, I don't know that I have to be here. It sounds like they've, they've done this many times, so it sounds like they've got it pretty well down. Um, but I'm sure we should have a representative here, obviously, while they're moving our things around. But I just wanted to pass this by you, let you know that this is what he's presented, if you will. Would you like a motion for? Yes, I think I, I think I would, just so that you know, with using the money using that was the CIP. yes, yeah, yeah, and um, those monies that were passed at the warrant at the uh, town meeting this this year. I, I, go ahead. You want me to make a motion now? You ready? Or yes. do you want, okay. I'm hoping that, I'm sorry. I'm okay. hoping that we don't have to, that if we get this in in time, it can be done this year so I don't have to encumber funds right. to finish it in the following mm-hmm. year. That was yeah. the other thing I was trying to avoid. And that we can cap it at this price. That Correct. We, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I make a motion to expend $37,785 from the CIP funds for the DuPont storage systems for the vault as presented by Kim Trammell. I'll second that. All right, roll call vote. Uh, oh, yes. discussion, sorry. Right. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Very yes. <laughs> Good and yes. Prentice, yes. It passes, three yes, zero no. Is that a single signature? Well, it would just oh, be a motion. I or, think it's just a motion at this point. I will get something from him. Yeah, um, in the if the motion board go in the contract, I think is yes. what would mean. Yeah. Um, or to, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> to ask for a contract. Great. So is that all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Good. Cool. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. So next, we'll go on to the conservation committee. Uh, Becky, did they get the uh, yes, we did. Yeah. information I sent? He did. All right. Uh, what I'd like to do is first there, are, I, have a, um, I have a few. Yeah, I didn't receive any information from you. You well, did? We got, we I printed out. that out. Oh, yeah, I oh. printed that oh. off the web page. Oh. Yeah. I sent it to you last Friday. <laughs> Just, uh, well, Sorry. it's okay. <laughs> I will read it to you then. <laughs> First, I'd like to say that um, there are several of us uh, on the commission here. Uh, there's uh, Shelley Miller and Chris Conrad and Jeremy Phillips is uh, joining us on um, video. Okay, and... Pardon? And I'm not on the commission. Oh, there he is. I wondered where he disappeared. How'd you get over there, kid? And the reason I asked those people to come, particularly Chris, who is our administrator, is that so they can answer the hard questions that you guys <laughs> ask. Okay. Um, did you want to say something, Chris? Yeah, I wanted to point out that I'm not on the commission. I'm a, I'm a paid staff member working for the commission, and I'm the administrative assistant. <laughs> Not the administrator. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't hang this all on me now. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, as I understand, what you wish to do is to review our um, process for doing uh, easement monitoring. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll send the resend the thing, Becky, and then you can give it to them so they'll have it for their files. Okay. Um, and what I'll do is go chronologically, I have a few comments to make at the end, and then um, well, we can ask questions any time, but uh, what I'd like to do is go through the process. When the, when the town um, either purchases or acquires a conservation easement from someone in uh, the town, um, the first thing that happens afterwards is that a baseline document is written which describes the property as it is at the time the easement was issued. Uh, it contains a description of the property, some maps, for example, um, uh, and these days we usually include a fair number of photographs. And the idea is that this is the benchmark, this is the reference. So that if years down, you're looking at something, has this changed or not? Uh, because that's basically what we'll be looking for. So after the baseline documentation is prepared, it's uh, signed by both the landowner and the Conservation Commission. So both agree that this is an accurate depiction of the property, or at least the property under easement. Then um, Chris uh, usually puts together a folder which contains the deed, the deed for the easement, a map, and the baseline documentation. And this then is used by any of the inspectors. Uh, and when we say inspectors, once a year, each of the properties is inspected to see if it is in compliance with the uh, uh, deed. Um, 
and I'll have a little bit more to say about that in a second. And all of our inspectors are people on the Conservation Commission or who were on the Conservation Commission. Um, and usually it doesn't change too much uh, as because we like to keep the same person on the same property because once you figure out where the boundaries are, for example, and the things that are the hot buttons for that property, uh, it's easier if you repeat. And Shelley is the one who keeps our track of making sure that each of the 33 properties has an inspector. Uh, inspections are usually done once in the fall. Um, and before the inspector goes out, um, he or she will contact the owner, see if the owner wishes to join them. Um, and it also asks the owner if there have been any changes in the last year and what changes you expect in the coming year. Now the inspector is looking for um, tangible things. For example, the most common thing that we have a uh, problem with is encroachment. Uh, some people just cannot uh, resist moving their junk over into uh, somebody else's property. Um, but there are other things too. Uh, uh, once in a while something else crops up. But by and large, we don't have too much problems. Uh, once the inspection is done, then there are reports to be written. Um, and there, these reports are fairly short. They ask, what did you observe, either man-made or natural, that has changed since your last inspection? And <coughs> Our inspectors now um, are not supposed to say that the property is in violation of the conservation deed because that can only be uh, that statement can only be made by somebody in the legal profession. So what our thing says is there something that needs attention, further attention, and you know if there is something like uh, jump. Uh, being piled on the easement property, and it, we, it's obvious that it came from a neighbor. We sometimes write a letter to that, and we've had good luck in getting that changed or cleared up. Other times we'll clean it up ourselves. Um, once that is done, well, Chris gets a copy of all of the uh, easement reports, and he will make sure that one, the Landowner gets a copy, that the Conservation Commission gets a copy, and that if there is an executory interest, then those uh, organizations will get a copy. All right. Now, that's for the normal ones. Then there are three properties that have uh, state funds involved in the purchase of the easement. Uh, those require a separate form. And that form is very similar to the one we have, and it is sent to the state. Now, that's basically my little spiel. And I will just go straight to what I think you might wish, wish to know. And the reason you, you've asked this is because of the current problem with the Perkins easement. And we, just, we just want to discuss protocols no, I'm not just going to, monitoring. Well, I'm just going to tell you what... I'm not going to discuss the Perkins easement. Um, what we need to do is, that one was a problem with the fact that there are multiple lots in one easement. To my knowledge, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, we only have one other property that has two lots under one easement. The, uh, <laughs> Currently, yeah, there's there have been more that that did get subdivided mm -hmm. uh, years ago, before my time. Uh, but yeah, the two I can think of is Perkins and uh, Bear Camp Valley Farm. Okay, um, so I don't foresee that situation with the Perkins arising again because 
even though Bear Camp Tally Farm has two lots of record, the deed explicitly says that those two lots can be separated. Uh, and I suspect that in the future, if we are going to be having uh, easements with, two, with more than one lot, it would probably say the same thing, because it, uh, I think, would be easier. So that, very briefly, and probably not in the best terms, is the way the process works. Um, now, just hope you have some questions for us. We have one from the public. Me, Nelson. Melanie. Oh, okay. Um, is there any way that you could give me a list of what property is in the conservation easements that I could add to the avatar? Assessing program, just like a little sticky note. You want a list of the with the uh, yeah, lot numbers instinct. and all that? I just yeah. happened to bring one for you. <laughs> yeah, and then I and then it's just I can add them to. That would be good because then if someone wishes to do something, that would be fine. I separated them into different groups, but I can't remember. Uh, what group well, why whatever. Don't you, why don't you send her an electronic copy? Because that would probably be easier for her. Don't, whenever. That would be great. Oh, right there. <laughs> I'll send you an electronic copy, too. Oh, How's that? Uh, you have both. Thank you. Yeah. Now, do any of the commissioners or alternates wish to make another further comments because I know I haven't covered it completely. I just want to <coughs> add that uh, the reason for the monitoring is is it's required for the state funds in those cases that Nelson spoke about the state funding but it's required for all the easements and in part it's because we as a conservation commission um, follow the standards that are set by the Land Trust Alliance, a national organization that accredits private land trusts, and we're obviously not a private land trust, but um, you know we take take it very seriously, and as I said, follow their pretty strict standards that are applied nationally, and that's the basis for doing this annual inspection and, and keeping on that calendar. And if you're interested in reading boring stuff, uh, <laughs> I can, I can uh, give you uh, a few other things. The, uh, we have a suggested guidelines for Tamworth Conservation Commission easement monitor. It gives them the step by step of what to do. The, the, the duties for the conservation easement coordinator, uh, that would uh, explain a bit. And uh, I went and with, uh, with the authorization of the chair, uh, I went and I, I revised the uh, easement uh, monitoring forms uh, two years ago. Uh, for a number of reasons, which are listed listed in here, one one was that it didn't have the date. It didn't have the date on the front of the form. <laughs> so when you had a whole bunch of paper copies, it was a real pain to to find the signature page and where it finally had the proper year it went to. Uh, and uh, the other ones were, uh, well, the the state decided to change to not. Not letting, not asking the monitors to say, to answer yes or no, is this, is this uh, easement uh, being violated? Uh, and they, they decide to go to a, uh, just right under review. And then, but I, I was afraid that that would leave out any other information they might give us there was a problem, so I added, I changed it and added another uh, another box 
that said, is there anything that you think deserves further scrutiny sure. or discussion? And check yes or no, and if so, and that would show up. And the third reason was just to make it easier for the people, because I made out individual forms for every easement, so they didn't have to write all the easement information. Mm -hmm. Half of the work was yeah. throwing out the first section. Okay. So if you're interested in looking at these, uh, I only made one copy, but you have a copy of the card. Do. You're, you're welcome to. That will uh, give you a better idea of how we do things. Uh, copy the. Uh, material that I sent Becky that didn't get uh, to her inbox I did have copies of the easement reports and a, co a copy of a uh, um, baseline documentation just so you could see what it is, what we were doing. If you want all the reports in the last seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Summary to your solar show covered the base. Okay. Very good. That's all that I have, unless uh, some of you have further questions or some of my colleagues do. Or really want to become monitors. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for You're explaining welcome. the process. It helps us to understand how mm -hmm. all the parts are. And I will be attending your next meeting. I am the selectman representative. Oh. Yes, I think you were put on the. Yep, I got the email. Okay. Monday. Monday. All right. <laughs> we look forward to having you, Kelly. Thank you. I look forward to being there. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. You too? Yeah. Oh, is this your phone? Oh, it is. <laughs> Did try this? There's a first time on the floor, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, I don't wow. charge an economic relief on this commission. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> she might have got the back of her. And we'll just move right on to the interim administrative report. The bank balance. Um, which includes AP this month, this week is two million two hundred and twenty-two thousand three hundred and eighty-four dollars. Uh, Mel, I, and the planning board uh, were working on the Chicago Lake wedding paperwork. I shouldn't say planning board. The CLC secretary, Sheldon. It was it was sort of convoluted on who had the right and who was approving who wasn't. So we got together, cleaned up the paperwork. He's going to run it by the CLC. Once they agree with it, we'll have it uploaded to the town webpage. Kim will have some and the CLC will have some. So we're covered all around. We're all saying the same thing. We all have the same paperwork. What is it for? Wedding, Wedding on is. Narrows Bridge or oh, using oh, the Grove. Oh, okay. Um, I did send the planning board a memo in regards to the um, request, the motion last week for map 405, lot 16. Um, they sort of said, well, they can't do anything until we do something. So we printed out the RSA that says we need planning board feedback before we can vote. So they're going to discuss it on their April 27th meeting, of which uh, Selectman Prentice will be there, so therefore we can do that. I put in the read file, LRPC award nominations are coming due. They have to be in by April 18th, so if you want to nominate anybody, there's a bunch of forms in there to work with. Consolidated Communications is coming on uh, Monday to discuss broadband in the town of Tamworth. He'll be here at 11 if you'd like to come in. I will be here, and I worked on the broadband committee. Mel's the second for the broadband committee, so she'll be here. If you saw the paper, they're hoping to get uh, fiber optic high-speed broadband into Conway within the, by the first quarter of next year. Wow. So it's moving. They're going through town to town. Uh, they were one of the companies with Carroll County Broadband that came in and made presentations about expanding it. So they're really taking off and well, you're welcome to come in. Um, if you can, if you can't, we will update you at the next meeting. <laughs>
Yeah, I have to work. Um, the finance director needs a motion to allow her permission to be the authorized signature for the quarter and annual tax reports. I make Payroll a motion taxes. that the financial administrator can sign the reports for the annual Quarterly. Quarterly. Quarterly, rather. Quarterly and annually. Quarter and annual reports. Tax reports. Second. Tax reports. Did you second that? I second it. No. Discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Fair yes. Good some yes. Good yes. Passes. Three yes. Zero no. And we're still trying to get Sam straightened out. Um, our government login ID we don't have. We've been talking back and forth with that. And we have to dump a dump that account because we cannot obtain the ten numerical codes that they said we had a chance to attend. That's the only way they were allowed to sign in. But in the process of that, Sam has now changed from a done number to a universal identifier number. So before we get into this much farther, we're ca I'm calling Sam again, I tried before I came in, to make sure that if we switch and dump one account, we don't lose our historical information on the other. Yeah. Um, and never will it be sent up so that only a, t a phone can receive a text <laughs> message because that was how ours was set up. There's no other way to do our verification and log in. ID.gov will not they just said you're going to have to dump and start over. So uh, we will continue to update you because that also affects the um, ARPA funds and any grants yeah. and a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So hopefully maybe by next week, between Mel and I, we can get this set up. So that's it for me. Thanks, Ricky. Move on to the signature file. Uh, make a motion to... Approve the selection minutes for the March 31st, 2022 meeting. A second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Fair yes. Good some yes. Apprentice yes. Passes three yes, zero no. Make a motion to approve the non public minutes from session RSA or RSA 91 A colon 3. To A, as well as session two, which is RSA ninety one dash A three two B, as well as session three, which is RSA ninety one A colon three two E. Second discussion. Hearing none. Roll call vote. Very yes. Good and yes. Pronounce yes. Passes three yes, zero no. Make a motion to approve the accounts payable at in the amount of three hundred and four thousand two hundred and fifty four dollars and thirty cents. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Fair yes. Good and yes. Pronounce yes. Passes three yes, zero no. The year to date is two million four hundred and ninety six thousand seventy four dollars and ninety one cents. Line item transfer. What I did was because the um, generator at the school has been fixed finally. Mm -hmm. We wanted to pull that money out of the contingency fund so that we still had some money in the generator fund to repair this one or the police station. So it's just a, a line item transfer that says it will be taken out of the contingency fund for $2,710 and placed in the generator fund for $2,710. You'll see the generator fund overspent, but your backup for your contingency line is this is where it went. So it's just a, an auditing piece of paper to keep so you, you know where money on it or Yep. Yeah. I thought we passed that pass. You passed to expend the money. Oh, this, this is, is to approve the to line item transfer. Okay. Right. So I make a motion. Two numbers. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't remember the numbers. 2710. To transfer $2,710 from 
the CEA from contingency from the contingency fund to the over to the generator fund. Second. Okay. <laughs> Discussion. Hearing none. Roll call vote. There yes. Goodson yes. Prentiss yes. Passes three yes zero no. The, the Shakara Lake Conservancy pilot. They did return the pilot, so it's just waiting for your signature. So that's why it's in your signature file. Don't need to make a motion though. No, you just need to sign it. Mm -hmm. And the townhouse rental form. An individual requested to rent the townhouse for a birthday party on the second floor um, for a private birthday party and there'll be 15 to 18 people and there's not going to be a fee charge for attending by the birthday people. But there will be a rental fee. Yes. And yeah. asking if you want to waive the liability insurance because it's just a birthday party for a one-year-old. What happens if somebody falls well, I was going to say. Like, well, the town liability, we, you know. It's a town building. Huh? It's a town building. Right, it's, it's a town, town building, so there's always liability on it. We had asked people that were going to hold large groups like weddings and stuff, mm -hmm. if, they were gonna, if they had a chance of using the kitchen and stuff to carry a rider mm -hmm. insurance. We have waived it before for small groups or individuals or nonprofits. So like they don't the have town to carry their own insurance yeah. because yeah, you get a, it will you get be covered and under and ours. The, and the town, like legal, says that's okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So yeah. I just need a motion to approve. There's discussion. Is there still discussion? Yeah, I was going to say. Well, well I, I have to make a motion. We have to make right. in the, yeah. uh, I move we accept the um, birthday party rental with the waiver of insurance. I'll second that. Discussion. It, did you say upstairs? Yes. That's what it is. Okay, I don't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that she's confused when I said the main uh, upstairs or downstairs. And she thinks, I think she thought I meant the basement. So I think they want it. On the main level. Right. So. Just because I don't think we have food and drinks upstairs. No. I know she was she was confused when she filled it out. The other thing I would like to ask the board: in the past, we've um, Linda Castle and I and Barbara Walker have done the scheduling, you know, opening the door, making sure the heat's on, and stuff like that. And this lady is getting really anxious because next week is her party, and having to wait for a board meeting to okay it. I mean, if there's something big, we would go before the board, but we've always been trusted to say... To have them fill out the paperwork. And, and you know, and they know what the rules are. They know everything. If you've seen the um, agreement form, the rules, all of that. And has all that stuff been approved by, like, the town's legal? Yep. Council saying yep. that like that's the that's, like those those cool. rules yep. work and the form works and right because it's it's kind of crazy to right no, say I like if if they wanted a party tonight mm -hmm. they couldn't have it you we know wait right we right. gotta, wait, yeah. for gotta wait for a meeting and we've been I mean we're well, very we have strict every week so as long as they know that they're having a party before a week right. out it I mean we're, we're pretty strict I mean we're the ones that open and lock the door and to make sure that it's cleaned or whatever you know I mean it's like but I, as long as it's not a legal issue if, as long as it doesn't do anything to liability if the if the board doesn't okay it it doesn't matter to me you know what I mean? it's okay with me. the, the thing is, is if there's already a protocol in place that's right. been approved mm -hmm. there's usually like a $30 fee to use the downstairs right. that's the normal fee that's been going. And, and but we, you guys collect that when they do and the... Yep, I yeah. get the money, put the deposit in, you know, I fill out the deposit. And, mm -hmm. and there's a form every time they use it with the amount on it that goes with the deposit, so... So is there a, a threshold where you would expect um, our approval? Or? Well, I remember one time a concert, uh, contra dance. Mm -hmm. We came to the selectmen because there was a problem because there was beer cans in the trash because mm -hmm. we take care of the trash. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we came to the selectmen and selectmen wrote a letter to them. They apologized, but I mean, there's no drinking or smoking or anything in the building. But I mean, things like that we're bringing to the selectmen because 
Cause you need to handle. Right. You need to handle that. Yeah. But I mean, the everyday birthday parties, whatever. I mean, if the church wants to hold a Sunday school or something, I mean, usually we just have them fill out the paperwork. And mm -hmm. It's not very exciting over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think we have to finish this motion first on the birthday party, and then that's a separate one to give them permission to not come to the board for each. Individual yeah, rental, right? Motions. Or yeah. we could rescind this motion and just make that other motion. But we have to accept the birthday party application. Let's just vote on the birthday party yeah. one. Yeah. 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 So Good. we've discussed it, so roll call vote. Very yes. It's a yes. Print is yes. Happy Passes birthday. three yes, zero no. Uh, I make a motion to give the what's your official name? Um, Friends of the Friends Townhouse. Of the townhouse. townhouse. To give the Friends of the Townhouse the authority to accept and process reservations, reservations and, and the paperwork for rent for townhouse rentals without going through the select board. I second that motion. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Fair yes. Good to yes. Fair yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Passes. Three yes. Thanks Thank for taking care of that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the gravel tax levy for maps one, 201, lot 39, in the amount of 849.95. Map 206, lot 40, in the amount of 160. Map 413, lot 13, in the amount of $6. At 413, lot 14 in the amount of $150. Map 218, lot 98 in the amount of $124.50. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Very yes. Good and yes. Print is yes. Passes three yes, zero no. A notice to make a motion of for a notice of intent to excavate. For map 210, lot 3, as well as map 213, lot 31. Is that correct, Ricky? One's excavate, one's cut. The okay, cut. sorry. All right, so notice to excavate just for map 210, lot 3. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Fair yes. Good and yes. Apprentice yes. Passes, 3 yes, and 0 no. Make a motion for an intent to cut for map 213, lot 31. Do you want to, uh, we're doing them at a time? Oh, sorry, there's more. I'm sorry. Um, map, as well as map 414, lot 14, map 419, lot 7. A second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Fair yes. Good and yes. Apprentice, yes. Motion passes, three yes, zero no. And now we'll talk about the appointment of the new select board member. Um, last week we um, got the official letter um, from Aaron Ricker resigning because he's moving from town. Um, and we briefly talked about how to handle that situation. Uh, I know DJ's name got brought up at that time. You know, you came in and said we were talking about you, so your name got brought up at that time. And at that time, the board felt like, oh, wow, two well, of us are patient. brand new. We've never dealt with this before. We wanted to have a really transparent process. Um, and we left it last week that we would make this spot known so that people could come forward the way you've come forward to tonight. Uh, but we didn't really go further than that to say how we were going to make it known or, you know, we post it on the town website, do we, how do we do this? So I just wanted to take that next step and decide, you know, as Maureen said, it feels like a rumor going around because it's, nothing's been officially decided about our process. Um, the, the, I forget the third one, but the, the options are hold a special meeting, which is expensive, apparently. Special election. Special oh, election, election, sorry. Yeah. Um, we can appoint someone at will, and what was the third, the third thing? Oh, we could not appoint somebody, and then somebody could ask for it to happen. Oh, okay. Right. 
Um, so I think we decided that we would appoint someone, but we wanted to make it open to people who are interested um, in coming forward to take on the responsibility for a year until the next election. So I guess that my question to the board is, um, what's our best mechanism for making this known so people have the opportunity to come Step let us forward. know mm -hmm. who's interested so that we can make a decision that represents the town? And well, I think putting it on the town website is uh, certainly the, best, the first option. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, beyond that, I don't know what responsibility we would have to advertise it more mm -hmm. widely. Um, I mean, we could, I don't know, we're not using the exchange, because that's... <laughs> well, not as a formal form. Not as a right. formal, but I mean, you could... It, you said could we, use it, we can use it for information. People. Yeah. Does the town um, have... Would the town administrator have a, a, an account with the exchange? They used to monitor it, but again, legal said that the town itself should not be posting. So usually if there's something, I'll go back to Sue Stobridge again. Right. She posted, you know, the, now that the web page is cleaned up a little bit, that we're still looking for police officers and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. she posts that every Sunday on the... So you're saying that you're going to put it on the town website. And Sue Stobridge will post it on the... She sort of pulls okay. off the... Yeah. The website, what, and she also puts the link so people can go back right. to the website. So the website seems yeah. like the, the way to go then. I think so. And spreading word of mouth, too. Um, yeah, I feel I like any other platform. I feel like we should set a deadline. Yeah, we want. In maybe you know a not too distant Distance, future, yes. so that we're not languishing forever. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Does two weeks sound? I think two weeks sounds perfect. I do too. Two weeks from now. Two weeks April from now. Well, is that April twenty eighth? Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Is it April twenty first? I think. Twenty first. Oh right, twenty first. I'm already ahead of myself. I was I'm, say, I'm, I'm, already, I'm already into that week of April fourteenth. I've been doing agendas and stuff. So if we have any interest by April twenty first, then the board can review <coughs> candidates, ask people to come in. And then we'll let people know. And that gives, I think, the whole town an opportunity yeah. to... Especially and we had a great role model feet. coming forward. Well, right. Oh, yeah. 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 Good, good, good job. Good job. Yeah, with um, references and everything, that's great. Yeah, I mean, that's, and that's super helpful. we've had the feedback that it feels like a rumor, so obviously we haven't communicated it yet yeah. to that caliber, so... I mean, I, I would say that, um, I'm, like I just said that jokingly, yeah. um, but I think that the way you presented your interest and your qualifications was very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, with when you run for election, you do have candidates night, which gives people the chance to get to know you a little bit or ask questions or at least hear your voice or see you on that little Zoom square oh, yeah. this year. Um, so I would say that if at all possible, whether it's, I mean, ideally in person, people would come forward, take that initiative to come forward to mm -hmm. share with us their interest. So maybe that could be included in the posting. And this would all be done in public, right? The oh, decision, yeah. The yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, if we post it and they want to submit their name ahead of time, that would be fine, but you would like them here on the 18th. Or the 21st. Uh, well, it's got to be in by the, tw well, well, maybe, so we should do it on the... That's what I'm asking. Is oh. it 21st on a Thursday? Yeah. yeah. So, so let come in have, next week. have it come in before... I would, I mean, it's it, it's okay with me if they come in, if somebody knows, like we've had one so far. So right, I mean, he came they in can come in next night. So that's what I mean, they can come in the next, next week, two meetings. Next two meetings, meeting, yeah. yeah. Just in public input. Yep. Yeah, and they can come in if they've got something in writing that they want to share. They can bring that with them. But I mean, your decision will be made by the... We'd like all people first, first. to come forward by the 21st. Right. Yep. 
I don't think we're necessarily saying when we'll decide by okay. it, but we'd like all the applicants to be in by the 21st. I think by the, I mean, ideally by the next meeting. Ideally. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that until we know what we're yeah. working with, we won't good. say when we'll make it. Thank you. Hopefully I'll be up by tonight. Ooh, great. Thank you, Becky. All right, moving on to the select. Wait, can I just say, oh. Maureen, did that answer your question? No, I hear. Um, thanks. Yeah, I think it is unfortunate that there's been a week of not official notification. And um, I thank TJ for coming forth and uh, kind of helping this discussion along with a good example. So um, I wish you the best of luck. There's one thing, I guess, if this is my time to tell you something, I really <laughs> forgot that I probably should have said that not many people know, um, and there's people in this room that probably can tell me if I'm even close, but I did work for this town for, I believe, 12 to 14 years, I can't remember, but I mowed all the historical cemeteries from when I was 15 years old yeah. on, so that was something I did with my father, so... I do want everyone, you guys to know that. I, I can't remember how many cemeteries it was. I think it was 13 or 14, but I did all of them. Oh, so, thank uh, you. Yeah. That's a cool fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for coming in. Yeah, thank you. All right. So moving on to the Slegman updates. Carl? Okay, but I still haven't been to any of my meetings, but uh, Leanne and I uh, did attend Zoom session um, put on by New Hampshire Municipal Association for uh, municipal employees or positions. We went to learn about select being a selectman and it was uh, it was quite helpful. It was a, a long day and there were certain parts of it that we had no interest in. But uh, it's like how to run Nashua. Yeah, right, right. Like all the things to do with uh, Right, bigger cities. But it's a lot of good information. I would recommend it for anybody uh, who is interested in being a selectman. Um, I don't know, they do the workshops every now and then. I can't remember where the next one is. But just going to their website and, and searching uh, for stuff is unbelievable. It's a great organization. And we made it through. and. We will now digest the information we got. <laughs> um, I really don't have much of a selectman's update this week. I did um, speak with Richard Roberts um, just about um, the excavation pit, just to sort of um, establish that municipalities do have different regulations than other excavation pits. But I did just want to get his personal take on if he felt like the site was a safe site. Um, just because I think that we all want everybody to be safe. And um, he did feel like it was a safe site, but he did assure me that he is going to walk around with another set of eyes and see if there's any places where any fencing should be placed to make it more safe. So mm -hmm. that was really the only thing that I did as a selectman this week. Yep. Um, on that same note, I spent a lot of time working on research around the excavation laws and enforcement protocols that are built into the state's RSAs. And interestingly, um, I can't answer yet, because I'm still working on this part, I can't answer why nobody else has fencing, but it's part of the RSA and has been since 1989 or 1979. Yeah. Um, Distinct barriers or fencing is the language. Um, and Melly and I met today and went over some more of the documents um, uh, around the current situation that we're looking at and around the RSAs and enforcement in general. And we're going to meet again next week to continue on with the next leg of it. It's a lot of information and too. Cease and desist, though. We I start, know. yeah, we yeah. started looking at how cease, cease and desists are enforced and the precedent of. The use of a cease and desist order in Tamworth. To, you know, I don't know if we've ever used it in any situation before. Yep. So yeah. we have. Yeah. So we're just going to keep Great. working on that. And you did the thing with Carl too. And I did the thing with Carl too. Yeah. The 
And we, we, the next one we go to is at the end of the month. Yes. Which is, um, it's not six hours, thank heavens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're looking at a static screen because of Zoom with just like a, a slide on it, and the guy's face is like this big in the corner. It was so hard to look at. But the right to know the is, is right um, to know. it's that's only very important. Yeah, and yeah. it's only that's three so hours. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. That, that's the next one coming up. Great. Can I just add, though? I yeah. assume you're talking about the Baron Trust, and whatever happens between municipal or private, whatever, that fence was part of the approval process. Right, right. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So no matter what the town does or other people do, for that particular case, I was that making fence reference was to, uh, part of the approval. Yeah. Like yeah. conditional approval. Definitely. So. Absolutely. So. For and, sure. And that's, we discussed that. And it was a safety week. issue. For yeah, we did discuss that. Yeah. And we set a deadline. Yeah, we did set a deadline with the cease and desist. And it's Whether clear, it's typical or not, you know, but no, no. for that case. No, you're no I was making reference to a public comment from last uh, time okay. saying that even though the municipalities did fall under a different RSA, right. that they should still be safe places mm -hmm. to have in town. So that's what I was making reference okay. to. Yeah. yeah. Any other public input? Um, Becky, when you mentioned the broadband Monday, mm -hmm. is that a public meeting? Or is that... Anybody can attend, yes. It hasn't been posted because we don't have any selectmen attending it right now, but if two selectmen attend No, I just meant, is it, is it open to the public? Um, he said, if we wanted anybody, we want it. So Where is it and when? It's going to be here at 11. Because yeah. the office is closed, so just knock on the door, but we'll let anybody in that wants to come in. You can either meet with administrators or assistant administrators or selectmen. Yeah. Okay. Any other public input? Hearing none, I'm going to make a motion for an adjournment. Undebatable. Second. Nice work. That doesn't even have to be seconded. <laughs> I wanted to, though. <laughs> okay, but we can't leave until we sign a lot of people. No, we're not leaving because I have to make your file and you're going to sit down because people didn't sign.